All right, well, hey everyone, it's Rebecca Ruth and thanks for joining me as I chat with another creative today. Today, I'm joined by Nawan Patterson. How are you, Nawan? I'm good, how are you? I'm good and thanks for joining me today. So um, everybody knows that I like to jump right in. So Nawan, tell us where you are and what you do in the industry. Okay, I am in Virginia. Um, I am in the Hampton Road 757 area of Virginia. I am from St. Louis, Missouri. I uh, moved around a little bit before I got here. And a little bit about what I do, I am a model. Um, recently um, started to be in the creative director and stylist. And I'm also opening a clothing line very soon. So I'm working on a lot of projects. Um, right now <laughs> okay that's really cool so I knew about the modeling I didn't know about the creative director and I definitely didn't know about the clothing line so that's very cool to hear so um tell us a little bit about how, like your story how did you get to this point how did you get involved in the industry okay as a model um I would say I started in the industry just because everyone said you should be a model. <laughs> That's what I would hear. Um, you look like a model and just different compliments they would give me. I love the camera. Um, of course, at a young age, I didn't know anything about modeling. So one of my sisters, um, her name is Misha Carter. She actually was really pushing me, um, always taking pictures of me, you know, um, just pushing me to model and to reach out to other people with my pictures and go to different um, auditions and whatnot. So she pushed me. My mom, of course, was a big part of why I love the camera so much because that's all she did, okay? I was <laughs> on every picture and she had me all over her wall. It was, it was, it was a lot, but um, that's, that's kind of how I started off. And first I started off by going to like power shoots, meeting different photographers. They would introduce me to designers. I would, you know, um, learn about one runway shows and how to do print modeling, first of all, and um, the different type of runway shows and how things are ran. But yeah, modeling um, has been, my passion and fashion fits along with that to where I, I'm a fashion model. I'm also a beauty model, but fashion is where I want to be. Modeling is the fun part, um, but fashion is where I have branched off into creative directing and um, styling photo shoots. That's new to me, but I've been directing a lot of my photo shoots to where people have reached out to me and asked, can you, you know, help me with my photo shoot or um, getting my wardrobe together and um, the set together and things like that. So I am branching off to a different side of the fashion world and I'm very excited about that. Yeah, it's really exciting. It, that's one of the things I love about this industry is that there's so many different like directions you can go in, you know? Um, but it's yes. funny that you said that modeling is the fun part because for me, it was the other way around. Like for me, modeling was not the fun part. <laughs> so that's right. why I went to like styling and consulting. Cause I was like, mm -mm, I'm not feeling <laughs> this, this part over here. Um, <laughs> like, so it's just funny to me. But I mean, I know a lot of models. So I know a lot of models who love, love modeling. Um, right. And I think it's great. I think it's great. It's just for me, I just, yeah, it just, it just never, it never did it, did it for me. Um, but like now, years later, it's funny because as I keep saying, like, I'm not a model, I'm not a model, I'm not a model. People, but the more I say I'm not a model, people keep saying, do you want to, I'm like, how, how, like, what do I have to say to y'all? Like, I told y'all, I'm not. <laughs> yes. I, was yes like, I don't understand I it. It's like, the more I say mm -hmm. I'm not, 
the more people come out of the woodwork and asking me to do stuff. And I'm just like, no, like I'm, I don't. So, but yeah, like some people are just, they're amazing at it. They are, you know, it's a passion, it's a love. So, you know, but again, it's something that I love about this industry. There, There's literally a spot for anyone who wants it, I feel like in this industry. So that's very cool to hear. Um, so you creative directing, so it came out of you creative directing your own photo shoots and then people coming. So um, where do you want to take that? Like, so are you, do you, well, I don't know, I guess you can't really say for sure, but do you feel like you're going to step away from modeling more or is that going to keep going simultaneously with these other projects? That's, that's the goal, but I know that it's like, it burns inside of me sometimes to model like I want to do it that much so it's like even after I create my own pieces and I might have it for someone else I might still want to model it it's just that's just me so um I don't know if I'll ever stop it but I do want to slow I'm slowing it down modeling to focus more on uh styling and creating pieces for others so yeah um, I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is, I mean, you don't have to stop. I saw, a, you know, first of all, Iman, okay? I don't know how old the woman is now, but she still models. She'll still pop up here and there, you know, in, in some campaign. It's usually her own, like her own yeah. you know, beauty line and stuff like that. But still, like she's still out there. She's still doing her thing. So I feel like there's really no reason to ever stop. We're getting to the point in this industry where you're seeing different ages, different, you know, a lot more diversity um, in ad campaigns. So, I mean, shoot, you can be a hundred and still be modeling now. <laughs> now, <laughs> what's her name? Iris Apple. She just turned a hundred and she's still out there, you know, modeling. Hey. Sunglasses. So I was like, hey, you know what? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> At this point, we're 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 there, you know. So, and I think also modeling, um, modeling your own brand. I think there's something to say about that because obviously you have to hire models eventually, but your line, your brand is you, right? So mm -hmm. you are gonna evoke the feel and the passion better than anyone else could ever because it's right you. so I think there's a lot of like power in that as well so I think that's really cool yeah. um what brought on clothing line um due to the fact that I was styling my own shoes um of course other brands would reach out to me to model their clothing but maybe I would have to put something with their clothing or maybe I was hired by a photographer they wanted me to shoot but they didn't they wanted me to bring my pieces and I didn't have a designer at the time so I would put something together of my own um it's not all um should I say from start to finish brand new from the fabric to the finish because a lot of my pieces are resale and altered resale clothing um but that's what brought it on I like being creative I like big funky pieces um that stand out and I would just look for things like that and create pieces this is so much fun <laughs> yeah I get excited when I hear about um you know new clothing lines and things like that um yeah because I was having this kind of friendly debate with someone and I air quote friendly because you know when when if like if you want to debate fashion with me it's gonna you know I mean it'll stay in the friendly family but it can get kind of passionate <laughs> if you right. want to debate fashion with me okay yeah so, somebody <laughs> was you. yeah somebody was talking about how you know oh another fashion line like you know, it all looks the same. And, and I was just like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> exactly. No. I was like, I'm the wrong person to have this debate. With. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, yeah. But, yes. but have you had, 
have you ever been in situations like that or been part of conversations or even even someone's kind of subtly said something like to you like along the lines of like oh like another fashion line or another perfume line or another whatever it is line like why do we need to have so many or why is this different than the others that we have out here well because i just kind of just started with the clothing side i get more of that with the modeling those type of questions um kind of along those lines questions like what made you do that what made you wear that why what is this thing like are you know they just wouldn't understand it um i'm editorial with a lot of my pieces and some of them are just their runway looks sometimes, you know what I mean? And it's just big and gaudy, but it's it's the model world. It's not just a plain t-shirt. I mean, you know what I mean? It's And it's hard to explain to people that are not in fashion, like you said, they just won't get it sometimes. Um, but sometimes in the end product, it makes them understand. They're like, oh, wow, that actually looks pretty cool. Like they just don't understand the process. So yeah, it's, you get those type of questions that people doubt why are you doing that that looks so weird um things like that yeah i've definitely gotten those because like i mean fashion is a creative industry right so creative yes the thing is a creative's mind is completely different and people yeah. don't understand that so i'm like i understand that you don't understand i do because a, cre a creative mind is different. Like we just see things differently. So it's normal that you don't understand why quite frankly, we care so much <laughs> and stuff right. like that. or why, yes, we put that with that and everything like that. But then when you see it in a magazine or you see it on the runway, you're like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, right. guess who put all that together? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> guess who exactly. came up with that concept and put it all mm -hmm. together so you see exactly. the product and you're like oh okay mm -hmm. then, yeah. <laughs> but then you're sitting there during the process like i don't understand why would you put that blah, blah, blah. why would you put yellow with print and then blah, 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 blah. and then when it looks beautiful and perfect you're like oh okay but i'm like it's okay like not everyone yeah. knows not any everyone's brain is like that like i don't have an it mind right and it's okay you know my brain doesn't work like that <laughs> like <Right>. I, <laughs> yes. Yes. I think but i do think that people it's funny to me that after all these years like there's still a lot of people who just are like eh, like who still don't see the importance i i think is the better ways of the fashion industry you know, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I can appreciate that you don't care, quote unquote, about it, but there's still a lot of people who just don't see even the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And that to me surprises me still after all these years yeah. that people just don't see the importance of the industry. Like they think right. that we're just, you know, sitting here going to fancy parties and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so it's very crazy. Um, so as a model, I don't know if you've experienced this a lot, but I was just having a, a conversation with a stylist up in New York um, where, you know, the typical story where um, she does a lot of, um, at this point, she does a lot of like photo shoot and things like that, but she will take on personal styling um, clients sometimes. And, um, you know, a prospective client giving, you know, giving her a hard time for her rate. Um, mm -hmm. And so we were just talking through it and things like that. So have you experienced things like that? On the modeling side, but the, um, the stylist side, that side is still brewing. So it's just started. Um, rates are kind of doing these right now. So we'll, we'll see. That will come, I'm sure. Um, I need to look up some things on how to approach that better when it does come about because I mean it is what it is when you you set your rates they're they're set I mean that's why people shop around for someone that's cheaper and sometimes you get what you pay for and sometimes every time you know yeah exactly <laughs> so 
yeah um i ran into that with the modeling side yeah um <laughs> i passed this this i i referred her because i was in new york recently and someone asked me about my race and i told her and she was like well i can't afford you and i was like okay well um you know i i know another stylist i don't know her rates so I, you know i don't know she's more expensive yeah I have no idea, but I do know someone else. And well, first of all, I'll say this. I appreciated that she said, I can't afford you as opposed to you're too expensive. Because right. I hate when people say you're too expensive. Uh -huh. Because mm -hmm. my response is, no, you just can't afford me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, uh-uh. I have worked hard to get to the point where I can charge that. And right. I good so i mm -hmm. am worth every penny of that rate. right so no right. don't tell me i'm too expensive you can't afford me and that's okay yeah. that's, that's okay it's, okay. it's yeah. all right so yeah. um so i did appreciate that but then she went to the, to the stylist i referred and gave that status a hard time so i was like mm. <sighs> mm -hmm. yeah and the thing is she um you know She's doing like a wardrobe uh, um, makeover situation. And that can take all day. That's an all day job. That's tailoring. That's, that's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. And I think, so we just, we just had a really, really genuine conversation about that. Like she's going to hold her own and, you know, my rates are my rates. And if you can't afford it, it's fine, but this isn't a negotiating situation, but it led into this whole conversation again of just like, we're not out here just like playing dress up with Barbie dolls, you know, like right. we are out here hustling, grinding, because at the end of the day, if we don't do our job right, you don't look good. Right. <laughs> that, that's the bottom. Right. You don't look good. And then, yes, we don't look good because it's a reflection of us as a size. But more importantly, you don't look good. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you would think that you would appreciate that and that you would want to pay someone what they're asking for and quite frankly what right. they're worth to make sure that in the end the end result is you look good when you leave your house right that's the end result <laughs> yeah yeah and it takes a business mind to understand that sometimes so you know um yeah it's it's you gotta appreciate that yeah you gotta appreciate that yeah so it's just funny and that's another thing that we talk about a lot because it comes up it comes up a lot um where it's just again people just don't see the value i guess you could say it's like they mm -hmm. see the value enough to call you you know and book a consultation but after that right. they don't see the value enough to you know continue the conversation and you know work with you and stuff and i'm like it's okay like you know there are you know there are other people who will and things like that, but I think it's also mm -hmm. an educating thing. It is. Yeah, just kind it of is. educating the people. Right. <laughs> Sometimes they're willing to listen. Sometimes. Some, yeah, some. Yeah. 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 So as you're starting out, like, not that you asked for my advice, but if I gave one piece of advice, I would always say to people, set your rate and stick to it. Because the people oh, yeah. are like, well, you know, it's too expensive. Oh, oh, okay. It's too expensive for you, but okay. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I I'm, I have some pretty good people that I talk to that are um, business owners in different fields, but still, yeah, they're great mentors on how to um, stay firm with the rates. Um, right. Yeah, and I yeah. think and I've been through it in modeling, so it's 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 going to happen again i'm sure in the uh styling and designing industry i already know so yeah well you said something i think it's great that you have i mean i i truly 100 percent believe in mentorship but um i think it's great that you have mentors who aren't necessarily in the fashion industry but who know business because i think a lot of people forget that whether it's modeling design like it's a business even as a model you're a business um, right. And so I think it's great that you have, you know, business mentors, um, because, I, you know, a lot of people 
know the fashion side of it, the industry side, but they don't know how to wrap it back around to business, you know? So I think right. that's great that you, you picked up, you know, business mentors. That's, that, was, that was smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we talk to so many people that have their own business and it's just like, if you can learn something from them and just grab a hold of them and just, you know, um, you can you can see see the relationship and if it's building to where you feel comfortable and they feel comfortable it's just like you don't even know you're my mentor yet do you it's like you know they're helping you along the way but yeah it's it's really good um the people that I'm really close with are several photographers and videographers that um just have great knowledge and I'm just very appreciative um of how they're able to still kind of understand this side of the you know fashion world even though they are behind the cameras right yeah mm -hmm. absolutely well I love that you said that um they don't even realize you're you're they are your mentor because that's how it happened with my mentor at first I was like I don't think he knows that <laughs> I'm telling people he's my mentor <laughs> <laughs> right maybe I should have that discussion after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's great. Um, you know, this in every industry, like in life in general, you should have mentors. But I, I stress it, I preach it. This industry, especially, you need to have mentors. You need to just have people that you know you can trust, you can go talk to that aren't going to get caught up in the competitiveness or cattiness that is potent that is very potential in this um, industry. Um, so I think all in all, that's good. But Speaking of, um, you know, business, fashion people, um, we do know a lot of mutual people, but what I really want to point out is Dapper Luke, because um, first of all, I think he's, first of all, his, his, his collection and everything is amazing. But then also yeah. when you talk to him, he definitely has the business mindset. He has the entrepreneur mindset. He has the hustler mm -hmm. mindset. So like he has all of that. Um, so I thought, you know, I think when I first saw you, it was probably for his, um, the photo, was it a photo shoot that he did for his spring summer collection? Recently? Because, because I was in a runway show of his. Oh, was, you were in the runway. Uh, okay. That's right. The, were you wearing like a, a khaki suit? I feel like shorts, shorts. It was, was it short? No. Uh, it was a khaki suit, but it was a skirt. It was a skirt. Okay. Suit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it's funny because I had I saw him, you know, for RVA Fashion Week, and he I couldn't make it to that event. He invited me, and I was like, "How come you don't make stuff for women?" Because <laughs> I'm very direct. I'm like, "Yeah, like what about us?" <laughs> and he was like, "Well, come to the event." And <laughs> right. <laughs> you would see that he does. You know, so when I does. saw when I saw um it was really your look I was like oh that's cute that's cute so I think I texted him and I was like all right I see <laughs> I see you <laughs> <laughs> right yes <laughs> I'm Good reading people. it back in I take it back I take it back <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but no like I think he's he's a great um yeah like I just I feel like he would be someone great as a mentor colleague everything in this industry um oh yeah you know, just from, you know where he's come from and what he's built and right. like globally at this point and everything like that and now that he makes stuff for women I'm like okay <laughs> oh yeah yeah and everybody everyone knows Dapper Luke so he's he's great he's awesome definitely yeah. Something yeah very on. very cool yeah. um but yeah it took a long time to meet him for some reason but we we now have met so all is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah so um I guess I would just ask like at this point I know you know you're branching out creative director wise and um styling and and things like that you're you know you're those are the directions that you're moving in for your business. But I like to ask this, or you know what, let me retract because it's not that I like to 
asked this question. I just started thinking about asking this question. So let me, you know, let me not be a liar and let me say it right. I started thinking about this question to start asking people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me correct that. Okay. So the question really is, I was thinking about it, I was like, what is like your wildest dream as um, a fashion creative? Mm. My wildest dream is wildest. What wildest? I think wildest, <laughs> I, like I say wildest. I don't know if I should change that. You know, like I said, this is you know, this is just. I'm still working this one out, but maybe. Like I say wildest in the sense of like in everyday terms, it's like that would never happen, right? But yeah, if it, like for example, I wouldn't say it's my wildest, but one of my kind of wild dreams is to work with Zarina Akers, who's Beyonce okay. and Silas. And I want to do like an entire like photo shoot with her for Beyonce. Mm. So that's one of like my wild dreams because it's like in everyday life, that's probably not gonna ever happen. Like you just, you know, but it's like, yo, like I'm just gonna keep speaking into existence. You never know. But it's one of those yeah, where really I'm like, Shh, I don't think that'll ever happen, but it's 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 up there. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um <laughs> I don't know if you know this model, they call her the queen of dark. Um, her name is Nye Kim. Um, and Nye Kim, she's so beautiful. I would love to style her. Um, I would love to style her. I can't even picture of what it would be, um, but I would love to style her. Um, that's not really a wild. I mean, it's wild because who she is, but it's not like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, you got it. Because I think I say wild because like I said, it's like, it's not like I can just pick up the phone and call Zarina, right? Like yeah. a lot of things would have to happen in order for me to get to that place. So I say wow, oh, yeah. in the sense of like, when I sit here and think about how that would happen, I'm like, I have no idea how that would happen. Right, <laughs> right. But would it be amazing? Of course, it would be amazing. <laughs> Definitely be amazing. So yeah, I, I yeah. think that's a good one because it's like, when you think about it, you're like, I don't know how that would happen, but it would be amazing for it to happen right um it would, definitely. yeah you know the model um i'm probably saying her name wrong but a, a, a dut a d u t i forget her last name um beautiful like really really dark skin i forget what country in africa mm -hmm. she's from uh, I um she's yeah. someone i would love to work with like yes love, love to work with her um yeah and I, I just picture, like I've pictured in my head because of her skin tone, like all the different like colors and just how much fun we could have with print and color and background and everything. Um, but I'm like, child, she she doesn't know who I am or even <laughs> looking in my direction. <laughs> right, right. But it's a dream. I mean, but it's a dream, right? Yeah, it's a dream. So maybe so. I should re reword it and say, you know, dream. Um, but it's a dream. So, um, the thing is with this industry is that you just never know. Um, what I'm learning the most with Worthy is, you know, this person knows this person who knows this person. Like as big as the industry is, it's also really small at the same time. Right. Um, especially for people of color because we tend to mm -hmm. stick with each other and you know kind of bond together within this industry so it's like you just never know you never know who knows who who knows who who knows who and you know maybe someday it'll happen maybe when i'm right. eating. <laughs> <laughs> no not the end it'll be before the <laughs> <laughs> oh we could do an epic photo shoot with both of those models and zarina there we go uh, there we go 
There yes. we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Beyonce. Oh we could do it for like Beyonce's 50th or something. That's in 10 years now. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it could be like this epic Beyonce turns 50 photo shoot. <laughs> let's get the planet right now let's plan hey. how we gonna do this every right. year right get closer. Every year we're like all right who knows zarina <laughs> <laughs> we just asking that question so we get an answer <laughs> oh yes yes oh man yes. But you gotta dream like you you have to dream you have to um not just dream i always say like along with dreaming work because I can dream about working with Zarina Akers and Beyonce, but then I've got to do the work because let's say I do meet them or I get in contact with her tomorrow. Am I ready to be at their level? That's the thing. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. along with dreaming, work so that you're ready right. when that dream does come to fruition, you're ready to actually produce, you know, mm -hmm. the work that you have to produce for people at that caliber. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah, so it, it goes hand in hand for sure. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you sharing your dream. I'm gonna look her up. What? Um, how do you spell her name again? That model. N Y A K I M. N Y A. Jack Jackim. Jackim. She's. I probably screwed up the pronunciation as well. Usually N in Africa as a first letter is usually silent. That's why I said that. But okay, I'll look her up. N I. Okay, sorry. Say it again. N Y A. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up right now. K I. -M. Because if not, I'm gonna text you and be like, "What was her name again?" <laughs> N Y A. N N Y A K I M. K I M. And her last name, oh, Gat Witch. Yes. I yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. I see her. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Look at that skin. Amazing, beautiful skin. See? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, you brought up Beyonce. Um, I like that you brought that up. I mean, she was one of my first. Um, famous inspirations that I did with uh, modeling because I am inspired by a lot of people um, but I did one of her sh a shoot last year that was geared towards uh, her already song mm -hmm. and I was seen just look to look something like Beyonce and um, it was so much fun and um, it reached a lot of people and it was like oh my gosh you look so good I'm like so maybe I can lean a little bit more of these into these inspired shoots by other people whether they're models already or whether they're uh actress or singers or you know um I did Erica Badu um uh Pam Greer when she was Foxy Brown I did that recently um, but that was a lot of fun. And, and those inspired shoots really allow me to get into character. And it's like, um, you know, it's it's just so much fun. Yeah. Into yeah. 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 Yes. Beyonce. Yeah. Definitely on the list. Listen, <laughs> Beyonce, I mean, y'all like her personal life, her music, like whatever, y'all all have your opinions about all of that. But when you just look at her photo shoots, her like the creative things that projects that she that she does that she produces it's always like wow you know like oh, yeah. I would love to do I've I've envisioned this um because I don't know if you watch Black is King but I've like envisioned this like kind of several part series photo shoot um inspired by that like real like you know I am actually African but like really like honing in on like Africa and the elements mm -hmm. of African design and culture and everything like that and kind of like making it a series um mm -hmm. yeah. like kind of like a, a story you know telling a story mm -hmm. by but by photo by picture so and that's what she did with Black as King um right. 
but like I want to do it as a as a photo shoot so it's just you know things mm -hmm. like that things that tell a story and those are things that are so powerful you know those messages and everything like that like and you can really get detailed like um you know, in Africa, like the Maasai tribe, a lot of people know about the Maasai tribe out of Kenya, like their jewelry tells a message. A lot of them do, but like, you know, the colors that they use, each one symbolizes a certain message. So the thing that people I think maybe know, but don't really under like think of like subconsciously is that Beyonce is always sending a message. Like she's always yes. a message. Yes. So it's yes. like that's what I look at when I watch her, mm -hmm. you know, creative work like that. Because like oh, yeah. every color she uses, pattern, symbol, everything that woman does is sending a message. Yep. So yep. I'm just like, that's how to be like an amazing creator when you can send oh, yeah. a message without actually saying anything. Right. <laughs> right and, <laughs> and the message might not be understood by everyone they'll they'll all take bits and pieces and think something different but it, that message is deep with Beyonce yes, yes. always yes. it's always a deep message so like that's what I want to do like because in Africa a lot of like the patterns and the symbols and the colors and everything all symbolize something so oh, these, yeah. ooh, this epic photo shoot with all these different elements, you're sending the message without saying a word. It's all in the right. picture. And those people who know how to pinpoint the message will get it. And mm -hmm. some of y'all may need to educate yourselves on some of the message, but like, right. you know, but that that's what I envision is like, you know, a message within the picture. Um, mm -hmm. all, so yeah, maybe I'll have to get with you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. 2022 project, maybe. <laughs> I am ready. Yes, ma'am. Because so, yeah. But yeah, so, uh, but I appreciate you sharing um, and for chatting with me today. It was great to, you know, just hear a little bit more about you and your story and where you're heading. I love to hear that, where creatives are heading in their, in their journey. Um, and I love that we are local, so we can actually yeah. work together. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time to chat with me today. I appreciate you as well for reaching out and wanting me to be on your podcast and show. I mean, I'm very excited to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.